Who did you vote for last night? No? This morning? I'm pretty sure you did vote more than once today. And if you're like 95% of the population, you voted in favor of climate changes, in favor of a rising sea level, in favor of an increase of temperatures and more natural hazards around the world. Oh, and you also voted in favor of the suffering of millions of animals. It's okay, we can still be friends on Facebook. <laughs> I'm talking about the social and environmental impact of your food. I'm a researcher and a writer, and I started doing research in countries where people are much more vulnerable than we are here to climate changes. In the beginning of my research, I always believed that in this whole climate change debate, it were really the big players that determined the future, right? The governments, the corporate sector. But I was shocked to find how big the impact of our daily eating and buying behavior really is. See, voting is a tremendous, powerful form of elections. Turnout rates are 100%. We all have to eat, right? And every time you eat, you send a political message. You're investing in a sector, allowing one sector to grow and not the other. You're perhaps allowing the agricultural sector to grow or the plant-based sector. And every decision has far-ranging consequences. Now, you may have heard very recently, there was a report saying that we have 12 years left before climate change catastrophe. Think floods, droughts, typhoons, hurricanes, poverty, climate change refugees. There was also another report about a study that was conducted amongst 40,000 farms in 119 countries, covering 90% of all the food that we eat. This study was about the damage that farming does on the environment, and it had two major conclusions, both pretty clear. One was the damage that farming and livestock is doing at this moment to the planet is massive, more than any other sector. Number two, if you want to do anything to stop climate changes, the best thing you can do is avoiding meat and dairy. Now, why is that? It's because the food system, as we've organized it now, is incredibly inefficient. What we do now is we feed proteins to our cows and chickens and pigs, and then we slaughter the animals to get the proteins from them but they don't give us all the proteins that they eat. So if they've eaten plants or grains, they'll use part of that for their own living, for growing, for breathing, for moving about. And we only get the residues. So if you would give grains to this chicken, instead of leaving the chicken and her eggs alone, you lose 40% of the protein that she eats that she had eaten. For cows, that's 96%. Would you allow that type of waste in any other aspect of your life? Probably not, because it means that if you would eat one pound of uh, plant protein, that cow would have to eat 25 to get you the same amount of proteins on your burger. That's pretty crazy, right? So, Avoiding meat and dairy is really the most efficient thing you can do at this moment to reduce your impact on the environment. It's more efficient than flying less. It's more efficient than driving less often in your car. And it's certainly more efficient than, for example, trying to eat sustainable meat and dairy. Because they're really not so sustainable at all. If we compare so-called grass-fed beef, you know, the stuff you get in eco-conscious restaurants nowadays, with proteins that you could get from, say, a pea, you see that 
the grass-fed beef is still responsible for six times more greenhouse gases and 36 times more land use. Now, a couple of years ago, scientists already predicted that if we would stop producing meat and dairy, we could still feed the world, but we would use 75% less land and we would pollute much less. So for some people, this idea is confusing and terrifying. For me, this is incredibly powerful. Because I believe that if we become aware how much power we really have just by eating, we can start to align what we eat with our wish for the future. I've lived in Greenland, where the ice cap is melting, causing sea levels to rise. And I've lived in Indonesia, where slum dwellers get flooded more and more often. You and I, we live in exciting political times. We are the generation that may stop climate changes just in time. A radical change is needed, and radical change is already occurring. The vegan movement is the biggest growing social movement worldwide at this moment. And let me briefly say something about this world vegan, because I know it's going to put people off, and I get that. Because people associate the, world, the word vegan with a diet. Veganism is not a diet. You can eat yourself a heart attack on those meat substitute burgers. Veganism is a highly rational decision that you could consider while living in a world where the world population has grown to 7.1 billion, an estimated nine in 2050. And if we insist on all these people getting their proteins from animals, it's going to have far-ranging consequences. Not just for my future, or for the guy sitting next to you, but also for their future. Experts are already predicting that eating meat might be banned within this generation. Now, if I say experts, I'm not talking about the climate scientists. I'm talking about people who you may least expect to support this movement. Bill Gates, the founders of Twitter, they're already investing in companies that are creating meat substitutes. Basel, Dutch margarine brand, just released their newest commercial, stating that plants are the new cows. McDonald's is anticipating that in 15 years from now, all of their snacks might be vegan. In the 90s, only a few million people worldwide did not eat meat and dairy. In 2015, an estimated 750 million called themselves vegan. And of course, not everybody is into this movement for political ideology, right? If we talk about companies, well, they're probably also in the trend because they see that the trend is lucrative and they don't want to miss out. And likewise, what you ate this morning probably wasn't just determined on your political view or your view for the future. Probably you just ate what was available or what you felt like eating. But to them, the effects were all the same. Every time you're about to attack a burger because you're hungry, even if you're not thinking politics, you're voting for a certain future. If you're busy making a photo to post on your Instagram from your beautiful green juice, you're not just voting, you're telling the whole world who you voted for. And if you're one of these people who thinks politics should never be discussed at the table, you're voting nevertheless, because that's the thing with eating. You don't have to say it out loud. You don't even have to think about it. It's right there in front of you, on your plate. 
Now, this label, veganism, might soon become redundant. We don't triumph ourselves nowadays for being omnivores or carnivores, right? We don't walk into restaurants asking to the waiter, do you maybe have also a dish that was specifically made out of animals? We don't order an animal dish on a long flight. We don't have to, because eating animals is still the norm now. But this might soon change. Like smoking. That lost its very cool image quite fast. You determine which sectors will grow and which cannot. You vote for certain companies to develop and for others to stop. You vote whether sea levels will increase, temperatures will rise, and more natural hazards will follow. And I really hope my talk has made you hungry, because we've got elections coming up. Thank you. <laughs>